Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today is episode number 15, and we're going to be talking about why hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's cause hair loss, and specifically what you can do to fix it and to regrow your hair. So let's let's jump in here. Um, I would say about, well, I would say this is a pretty complicated topic. Um, but it doesn't have to be, but there's a lot of working and, and moving pieces that you need to understand if, you, if you're suffering from hair loss. So I'm going to explain this. Um, in simple terms, so hopefully uh, it's really easy to digest and for you to understand. So let's let's talk about it. I would say about 95 to 98 percent of thyroid patients who suffer from hair loss have the ability and the chance to get back to their normal hair before they had their disease. And it's absolutely true uh, that thyroid causes hair loss, but it's not as simple as just saying it's hypothyroidism or it's related to your thyroid because as you probably know, your thyroid controls other systems in your body and if those systems get damaged as a result of your thyroid, then your hair loss can either be primarily due to your thyroid condition or secondarily due to your thyroid condition because of some other issue. Um, and then also it gets a little complicated because some treatments for your thyroid can cause the, your hair loss. So let's let's explain this again. Don't get confused. We'll, we'll talk about it. So I'm splitting this up into four main groups. So the first one has to do with your thyroid medication. And what I want to talk about here is there's two entities that can really uh, cause problems with your hair. The first is your, do your dose is too low, meaning you're not being treated adequately. The second is your dose is too high, meaning you're taking too much thyroid hormone. Okay, so both of these conditions, either your dose is too low or your dose is too high from your medication, from your thyroid hormone medication, like level thyroxine or synthroid, etc. Those two entities can result in hair loss. And so I have a lot of, um, a lot of, on the screen here, a lot of, um, resources that you can kind of go and, and take a look at these. Um, and I go into more detail. So we're just, we're just kind of touching base here, um, in a general sense, but if you want to, you can read about these things. Um, but but let's talk about this. So then, if you suspect that your hair loss is due to your dose, what you need to do is you need to try and get your thyroid lab test into the optimal ranges that we discussed previously. So if you haven't already, you can go back to the previous video where we talk about it. I show you a chart and a diagram, and it shows you what the optimal range is. You need to make sure that you, specifically your T3 is in that sort of optimal range. Because if it isn't, then you know your dose is too low. On the flip side, if your TS SH is suppressed down to nothing and your free T3 is incredibly high, then your hair loss may be due to your dose being excessively high, all right, in which case you might have to reduce your dose. Now, for a lot of you, that means you may actually have to add in T3, all right, so you may need to switch your medication from level thyroxine or synthroid to something like nature thyroid or WP thyroid or uh, NP thyroid or armor thyroid, whatever it is, some sort of uh, natural desiccated thyroid. Uh, uh, formulation, or you may need to add T3 to it. So remember, focus on the T3 um, when it comes to that. And again, try not to suppress your TSH to dramatically low levels and increase your free T3 too high because that can also trigger that hair loss. So again, think about it this way. Your medication is like Goldilocks. It needs to be in the perfect spot. It can't be too little and it can't be too high because if it is on both ends of the, that spectrum, you may experience hair loss. Now, the second thing is, a second really, really important thing, perhaps even more important than your dose, is your iron and ferritin status, okay? And we've talked about this before, but thyroid disease can result in an increased risk of developing iron deficiency, and it has to do with how your body metabolizes and absorbs iron. And so if you don't have sufficient thyroid hormone, your uh, stomach acid is going to be too low, which means that you're not going to absorb, absorb iron that you consume, which is going to lead to uh, iron deficiency, and that's going to cause worsening thyroid function and then worsening iron deficiency and so on. It kind of goes in that cycle. You have to break that cycle by at least looking at your iron level. And you do this by ordering what's called a ferritin. And I have an example right here. And so this is a pretty typical um uh, ferritin level from a hypothyroid patient. This ferritin level is 9, which is very low. So the range is 10 to 150, let's say. It just depends on your lab, but it's somewhere around there. Now, in order for you to have optimal hair growth, that ferritin needs to be at least 30 and preferably usually somewhere in, in the 60 range. So uh, somewhere between there. But anything, even though it's within the normal range, if it's on the low end of that normal range and you have hypothyroidism, you have to get it up. And that means you may need to supplement with iron in some way. So usually liquid iron or iron capsules, which are um, 
uh, highly absorbable, will work for you. So I have some recommendations in here if you believe or if you know your ferritin is low. But don't get into this box where you think you need to look just at your thyroid because it may actually be your nutrients. And ferritin isn't the only one, all right? So other nutrients involved in the hair growth uh, cycle include B12, silica, biotin, zinc, and L-lysine. So these are, these are several. I talk about them here in more detail if you want to look at that. But just remember, you want to get that ferritin up and you want to make sure your nutrients are up. And this is why, by the way, just, just to put this into perspective, many women say once they start, once they get pregnant or once they start taking a prenatal, that their hair starts to magically grow. And so they think, oh, it must be the prenatal that's doing it. Well, it's actually probably the iron inside of the prenatal because many women suffer from iron deficiency. And it, and it, this doesn't hurt that it, it has B12 and other nutrients in there. So make sure that those nutrients are optimized. Okay. So that's number two. Number three, we're going back up here so I can get to my, there we go. Number three um, has to do with your thyroid medication itself. All right. And so this, this is a tough one, um, but we'll, we'll talk about this. So level thyroxine itself can cause hair loss, not relating to your dose, just the medication itself. So one of the negative side effects or potential negative side effects of this medication includes hair loss. The same goes for NDT and the same goes for Cytomel. Now the good news about Cytomel or T3 is that that hair loss is usually reversible, meaning uh, once you, well, or sorry, not reversible, it just goes away on its own. So I, I guess that is reversible. But if you take Cytomel, usually for the first two to three months, you'll experience some amount of hair loss and that will just go away after two to three months. But what happens with a lot of people is even though they need it, they'll take it, they'll start losing their hair and then they'll freak out and they'll stop taking it, even though it's good for their body. Okay. So, so remember the medication that you take itself can result in some hair loss. So what do you do about it? Well, one of the things is, let's say you, you suspect it's level thyroxine, it's usually an inactive filler or a dye inside of your, your thyroid hormone, not the thyroid hormone itself. So what you need to do is simply switch to a different type. So if you take level thyroxine, switch to Synthroid. If that's not working, switch to Tyrosine. If you're taking Armor Thyroid, switch to NP. Or if you're taking um, Nature Thyroid, switch to NP or vice versa. So just stay in the same class of medication, but switch to a different type. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. And if you're, and if you have Cytomel or T3 or Lyothyronine, try to tough it out because normally within two to three months that hair loss should stop and then you'll start to regrow your hair back. So you have to, you have to make sure, and this gets really confusing for people because they're, they know they're hypothyroid, they, they're losing their hair, you know, and then they start taking their medication and then their hair loss gets worse. And of course they freak out. Um, but you have to think what, what is the main issue here? What, what's causing it? Is it the medication itself? Is it the dose or is it your nutrients? Okay. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. It's really easy to kind of go through, but you systematically have to go through and, and squash them down. So number four, the last one is your sex hormones or are your sex hormones. So specifically testosterone and other androgens. Now these if you have imbalances in these sex hormones, you may start to experience a different type of, of um, hair loss, especially the, the male pattern sort of baldness. So that's different than the female pattern. But uh, the point is you can, women can definitely get that pattern. And it has to do with how your body is metabolizing um, testosterone once it's in your body. And I have, a, I have an image here, but basically what happens is testosterone can get metabolized to a very potent androgen called DHT. And if you create more DHT from the testosterone, that's going to act on the hair follicles and it may damage them and result in hair loss. And the problem is hypothyroidism may result in excessively high testosterone and a PCOS like like a pitcher or syndrome. So you have to make sure that this probably goes back to number one, which is you're not being treated with enough thyroid hormone, because if you get that treated, you should be able to manage this testosterone itself. But if you can't, or if you fall on that PCOS spectrum, there are some supplements that you can take to sort of push that, that metabolism down another pathway so that you can reduce the amount of DHT that you are producing. Okay, so that's the top four reasons that thyroid patients lose their hair. Um, and then lastly, uh, I do have a, um, a hair supplement that, that um, I think works very well. It doesn't treat all of the causes of hair loss, um, but it's called Thyroid Hair Regrowth Complex. If you haven't looked at it, it might be beneficial to you. It works for a lot of people, um, but it, it tends to work around the nutrient deficiencies, but it's not necessarily a cure-all if your thyroid dosing itself is mismanaged or anything like that. So I know this is a complex topic. Um, and lastly, I do want to point out that there will be some amount of you, maybe one or 2% that may not respond to these therapies, which means that the cause of your hair loss may be genetic in origin. And we don't really have good therapies for, for those people who fit that category. So I apologize for that. But um, for the majority of you, the good news is about 98% of you should see some improvement. 
So if you have any questions about this, leave them below. I'd be happy to try and answer them as I have time. This is a complicated topic, but very important because um, the quality of your hair is very important, especially for your self-esteem. So any questions, leave them below, and otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one.